Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm a geek. I really like working on mathematical problems and explaining them to people. I've retired from a job at a big industrial research lab where a lot of my work consisted of just that. Now that I'm on my own for a while, I'm looking for whether I can get the same sort of fun out of explaining things in videos. A lot of what I've done involves various aspects of geometry, but I'm likely to stray far and wide because the field of mathematics is all connected. In this video, I'm going to continue exploring the cardioid, which is one of my favorite geometric figures. I'll look at a couple of real-world examples. We've seen in earlier episodes how to define the cardioid and construct it with straight edge and compass. We've explored its analytic geometry and derived formulas for diameter, area, and perimeter. One thing that's motivating this video is that a musician I know, who's not much into physics, asked me, so does this have anything to do with the cardioid microphone? The answer is yes. The microphone's sensitivity to sound as a function of the direction from the mic follows a cardioid pattern. That gives it a fairly flat response to sources in front of it. You can move a little off-axis and hardly affect the sound at all. But more important, the mic is deaf to sources directly behind it. Point the mic directly away from your monitor speaker, and there's no feedback howl. And it turns out that the way it's done relates directly to the formula for the cardioid and polar coordinates. The mic typically has elements that respond in two ways to the incoming sound. One response isn't sensitive to direction at all. It responds simply to pressure. A high pressure gives a peak, and a low pressure gives a trough, regardless of whether the sound is in front, or off to one side, or in the back. The other response is derived from a pressure difference. It's positive when the source is in front. It falls to zero if the source is directly to one side. And it's negative when the source fall is to the back. See how the peaks of the first response correspond to the troughs of the second. It takes on intermediate values at intermediate angles, and in fact, it's proportional to the cosine of the angle. The sound people call this a bidirectional mic. If we take the sum of the two signals, we get the formula of a cardioid. Some cardioid mics do this electronically, and even provide omnidirectional and bidirectional outputs as well as the cardioid output. Others take the cosine and the sum with a clever arrangement of baffles and air passages inside the mic. Another place where the cardioid has been important has been in radio navigation. In old pictures of long-distance airplanes, you'll often see a loop-shaped antenna somewhere. This antenna had a cardioid response. It worked using the same trick with radio waves as the cardioid mic does with sound waves. The loop of the antenna has a bidirectional pattern, that is a cosine, and the stick has an omnidirectional one. Practically any ship or long-distance airplane of the 1930s or 40s would carry a radio direction finder with an antenna arrangement like this. The pilot would tune a radio station and then had a crank that would rotate the antenna. When the sound disappeared at the headphones, the pilot would know the direction to fly to reach the station. There were radio transmitters placed at the airports and along the airways, and planes could fly a chain of stations from their takeoff to their destination. So here's one area where the cardioid comes up in engineering, making the response of some sensor directional. Next time, I'll continue examining popular arts and craft projects from the 1970s, in particular string art, and show how it, a cup of coffee, and geometric optics all relate in some way to the cardioid. Say tuned for that. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and keep calculating. <laughs>